Uh, first of all, I would like just to say that not everything is so bad as, 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 as media uh, tries to present. Azerbaijan is uh, really becoming closer and closer to Europe in all directions. We are really very seriously working on construction a new southern gas corridor. You know, it consists of four elements. It's the Shardanis 2 exploration part. It was done already, finished approximately 90%. Then it's going to be a thousand Caucasus. It's Azerbaijan and Georgian territory. Also the same figures. Uh, then turn up the, the pipeline which is, go, which is going over the territory of Turkey. Then it goes uh, also 86, 87. It depends on the approach. And then it goes to the Trans-Adriatic pipeline from Greece, Albania to Italy. It also go, you know, goes well. So we have a very good economical commercial basis for developing our political dialogue. It's not just a story about the energy security, about the Azerbaijan, which is supplying Europe by energy. No, if we assessed this, co this construction, this thousand gas corridor, as a very strong, good basis for exceptional political dialogue. What is the most serious problematic issue for Eastern partnership? It is that in most cases, it's a compilation of six, for example, uh, bilateral tracks of European Union with six different countries. In case of the thousand gas corridor, look, we have Azerbaijan, strategic partner of uh, European Union in energy. You have, we have uh, Georgia, which is associated partner. We have uh, Turkey, which is a uh, still candidate country. We have Greece, which is member state. We have Albania, candidate country, and we have Italy, member state. So look, such kind of comprehensive project. That's exactly what European Eastern Partnership project needs, project management. And that's we delivered. So the influence of this is crucially for bilateral tracks of Azerbaijan because on this strong commercial economical basis we are trying to build up our political dialogue as well for the multilateral track of Eastern Partnership because we are together, all together. By the way, other Eastern Partnership countries also enjoy uh, participation in such kind of the projects. So as much as we're closer to Europe, as much criticism we are hearing, in most cases, they are mostly artificial, unfortunately. And we know who are behind of these attempts. Because both sides, European side and Azerbaijani side, were all in favor of stronger relationship. As close as Azerbaijan to European market, market, it's better for us. As close and also for energy sufficiency and energy security of European Union. As closer we are to Europe, it's better for us from political point of view, because we are closer to European space of values. But there are some forces which are always in favor to cut such kind of the development, such kind of the, uh, such kind of the movement from Azerbaijan and EU side. For your information, we launched our uh, negotiations on agreement uh, you know, in February 2000 of this year. And in a short period of time, in just in three months, we did have five rounds of negotiations. It has never been you know, before in, in case of our relations, even in relations with other Eastern Partnership countries. Just in three months, five rounds of negotiations. It shows our, you know, how, how strong we are in our, not both sides, in our uh, you know, this decision to have it, to get it. And then, the last but not least, when it happened, it happened in the beginning of September, just when the preparation for the Brussels summit are starting. So we see three elements that which little bit makes, which make uh, our opponents of Azerbaijani EU relations a uh, little bit narrows. That's why they use this uh, criticism, again, in most cases, artificial criticism to, to shake up the relations to destroy them, as minimum to postpone some political decisions. That land remark, what does it mean land remark? It's absolute artificial fake you know, name. Just one example, we sent our press release to Belgium media. It, was, it appeared in Belgium media as well. They put the number 
one million or three hundred thousand euros of transactions from offshore zones, excavators, medical equipment, some uh, infrastructural equipment, some equipment for dentists. I don't know, you know, jewelry, you know, and lots of things have been bought by Azerbaijani uh, consumers from Belgium side, but it was done by offshore zones, which is a part of European Union market, by the way. It is the offshore zone which was, which, why Azerbaijan and other country, newly independent countries, they use it? Because we do not have direct free trade zone with uh, our European partners. And for our companies, in persons who are buying them, in some cases it's better to use these uh, transactions than, for example, to, uh, to, to wait for special uh, procedures which, uh, which, are, which should be done with, in case of European Union. We hope that a new agreement will give us a new opportunities for our trade, for direct financial cooperation. But nothing criminal was done in case of, uh, for example, again, one case, because I'm ambassador also to Belgium, in case of Belgium, nothing. No any transaction has been spent for, I don't know, terrorism, I don't know, the corruption or, 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 or drugs or any criminal uh, spheres of activity. But it was presented as a money laundering. And they especially pre created such kind of artificial definition. It shows that this, uh, when we gave this, uh, you know, the, this, our press release, it was uh, published. And nobody came back to this issue again, because it was true. I think we can find a lot of such kind of uh, uh, explanations and uh, if you ask me uh, why I think that it's most artificial, just give you the you know, logic and dating of what happened. 5th of September, the first article in Guardian, uh, signed by an uh, Armenian journalist, was a huge criticism with this Laundra Mart wording. Then, a few days after, again, a new article with the same media, with a huge criticism of uh, Southern Gas Corridor, Trans-Adriatic Pipeline. Then immediately reaction of European Parliament, without which without any clarification, put very critical, even insulting wording in the resolution about the human rights and corruption in the world, whereas only the name of my country was mentioned. Imagine, there are 193 members of U United Nations and this report was totally about all the world in the name of one country was mentioned in amendments which was adopted by very, very minor majority of European parliamentarians. It shows that it was artificially done and there are some forces who are against of Azerbaijani strong intention to be, to be closer to Europe, to work with Europe, to be the part of European space of values and European market. I would like to say, it's, I didn't never use the word fabricated. Uh, they used, you know, the, some real transaction, presenting them as something as a, a money laundering. I, I think it's, it's, not, it's not correct approach, because, for example, in the, in the media, which I saw here, uh, being as ambassador to Belgium, I saw a lot of pictures, with the pictures of a member of government, and it, it was presented as a governmental case. But it was done, transactions have been, done, have been made by, by persons, by companies, just to buy something, to sell something, for infrastructural projects, for another, it, it was just the transactions, like financial transactions, nothing connected with, a, uh, with a, uh, you know, money laundering procedures, that's why. And it happened in all the you know, European Union countries in one time. Imagine, in one week, we did have approximately 15 articles only here in, in, in Belgian media. What, what kind of, you know, can, you know, is it you know, suspicious that it is orchestrated? Or, you know, I do not understand. Maybe it could be done for a for long period of time. But for me, it's really absolutely clear that it was orchestrated orchestrated from one center, and there are some forces who are behind of these processes. Again, they can do everything they want. We understand that as much as we're closer 
to our European partners as more, how can I explain, uh, such kind of steps will be done against this closer partnership. Because Azerbaijan needs Europe as a space mentally close part of the world, as a space of values, and of course as a market. But Europe itself needs Azerbaijan as a, in your neighborhood, frankly speaking. I just recently came from the meeting of uh, the, in EAS with a representative of different religious confessions of Azerbaijan. Everybody lives in peace and, you know, in peace and security. So many Protestant, Catholic, Christians, Jews, Muslims, Sunnis, Shias, well, no problematic issue. Have you heard any, uh, about any terrorist threat from Azerbaijan or uh, illegal migration from my country or any radicalism came from my country? No. And in such a situation, when you have a, such a complicated neighborhood, European Union, I mean, Azerbaijan, small, 10 million country, predictable, reliable, secular, absolutely respectful and tolerant to all the religious, you know, why we should you know, uh, you know, insult, offend this country. Young country with absolutely clear aspiration to be closer to Europe without any uh, romantic, idealistic uh, estimation about the membership. Be sure. It's not in our agenda. One example, and you, it will be, everything will be clear. From 2009 until 2017, European Parliament adopted nine exceptionally critical resolutions about my country. What do you think? Does it mean that we are lobbying successfully? They blame that we are lobbying there. If we are lobbying, we do, should have something in our hands, yeah? But instead of it, we have nine critical resolutions. Just for information, just few about other Eastern Partnership countries and zero about, for example, Armenia. Nothing but nine critical. But about what kind of lobbying we can talk about if we have nine critical Resolutions in European Parliament just in these eight years, every year even more. So, you know, it's not true. It is not true. We have some, sometimes we have a, some you know, advices from our friends. We need some advices because we're a young country. We're just 25, 26 years old. Excuse me, what kind of lobbying we can talk about if we have a such kind, in European Parliament, if you have such kind of, you know, uh, uh, critical, such kind of number of critical results. We're number one among Eastern Partnership countries. So do you think that we So it's an absolutely artificial approach. That's why I am sure about it. Business as usual. Business as usual because we understand we are, we are in good manner. We are bureaucrats. We understand there are so many challenges. We should, just today, two delegations came for two rounds of negotiations, a new agreement in Azerbaijan. Just yesterday, another delegation came. It's a mostly delegation of different religious confessions. And they just meet, had the meetings in European External Action Service. And uh, we are working very seriously. We are waiting for the delegation from, uh, from uh, European institutions in Baku. Very, very soon, I'm going to Baku to accompany two very high-level delegations. So we are working even more intensively now facing with such kind of challenges. You know, it's a, it's, it's, it, it depends what kind of, what kind of uh, uh, leakage we are speaking about. Again, it's, it happened with all the uh, countries all over the world. You can see, it, it's not a story about only my country. When, but the, the question is, when my country was highlighted in this case, because we do have something in our, uh, you know, some achievements in our economical development. Yes, most probably. We are really very uh, strong in the economy. Of course, nobody would like to talk about the poor countries, about any, any uh, you know, economical activity of the poor countries. But in our case, we are really economically one of the most successful countries uh, in, in, in Eastern Partnership uh, in the former 
space of former Soviet Union. So second option is that, uh, again, why it was uh, uh, highlighted now? Because, again, we're going to the new level of relationship. As I would like to, we're approaching, I would like to say this word very clearly. We are approaching the point of no return in our relations with the European Union. It's crucially important to understand. I think it, is, it, 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 be, it becomes closer and closer. We, didn't, we haven't passed this point of no, no return yet because it's mostly not only a political dialogue, but also commercial, energy, transportation routes. Look, you know, what is the, one of the best ways for uh, the connection Asia and Europe? The shortest and safest way is over the Southern Caucasus. What is the best uh, way for, uh, you know, more active cooperation between you know, uh, European Union institutions and uh, such a complicated region as, as, as which, is, which is surrounding my country. My country, as a, we, we can, we, we, because we do have, not, I don't want to say influence, but we do have some renome in the region. We have good relations with Central Asian countries, normal, very predictable, and ongoing relations with Iran, which is especially important for our European friends, which tries to engage Iran in implementation of the nuclear deal. We have very normal relations with Russia without any new headaches for our European friends. I don't think European friends uh, need such a kind of new headaches. We do have some problematic issues, the occupation of our territory. And that we understand there are some forces who are occupying and who are behind all this occupation. They are highlighting this issue to make Azerbaijan, to present Azerbaijan as something barbarian. It's absolutely clear for us. But it doesn't mean that we do not accept any criticism. No. If you ask me, I would like just to invite you to my country and to show that how we manage to combat against the uh, corruption on the low level. So, so we have one window approach and no bureaucracy, and you can go to find the solution of all the problematic issues without any special you know, desks, additional desks. You can, it's a very specific you know, reform, uh, reforms which were provided in my country, and we're very proud of it. On the low level, I, I, the, the, the corruption is one of the lowest, maybe, in the region, in the world. Of course, we have a huge project. Look, just would like just to s s say one very interesting, important. We just signed the continuation of Azri Chirag Guneshli. Maybe you have heard, it's a, one of the most oil and oil project which was signed in the beginning of 90s. And now, in, you know, in, 2000, uh, in 2017, September 13, ministers from Britain, Norway, you know, governmental representative companies, they came to Azerbaijan just to prolong this uh, project. 500 million barrels of oil. Perfect. So, and it happened ex exactly. These media attacks happened exactly these days. And look, and you can see so many coincidences. I can't, I will call the coincidences, you know, just in brackets. But it's not coincidences. We understand that it's a, I, I, I kindly ask you if you can, just uh, put this wording in the, on, the, in the, on the front line of, of the article of, of the interview, that as much as we're, Ambassador Fuad Iskandarov, as much as we're, we are becoming closer to Europe, as more uh, unfair criticism we are hearing, or unfair steps from others we are, we, are, we are witnessing, from other players, not from European Union institutions mostly, because we have, have really good relations with them, with executive institutions. So it's, it's, it's absolutely clear. They would like to create the image of so-called image of Azerbaijan, uh, I mean these forces, as a so-called Muslim barbarians, which are absolutely not fitting with the European values. And what, what does it mean? It means that with this such kind of the country, European Union can, can't, you know, 
work, even negotiate at all. Very strange. We are a very secular country. If you will go to Baku, it's a very European city. Absolutely uh, no, you know, uh, but, uh, but why they did it? The second reason is we are in war now. And we have an ongoing negotiation based on principle of and norms of international law with Armenia. Okay. International law is in favor of independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. But how these negotiated negotiations could be you know, changed mentally? Just to present another part of, of the uh, negotiators as a something which is absolutely unpredictable, you know, corrupted, non-democratic, uh, you know, barbarian, and so on. Sorry, but is it pragmatic approach? I don't think. I don't think so. They can do it again and again. But in the end of the day, believe me, our, I'm sure about it. I'm here for four years in this uh, city as ambassador. And I know from which level we started and what we achieve now and what we can achieve in the future. My vision is for European Union and for European institutions, it's crucially important to have a good neighborhood and particularly good, reliable partners in the Muslim neighborhood. And Azerbaijan with a mostly Muslim population, the best example of it.